Okay, last one. Ten minutes we're done. Diddle dum dum. British Strongman podcast. So f- today we're going to talk about finally how to get better at strongman without actually competing. Like, can you do that? Can you just? Can you get? Can you get? Like I've I've kind of always been of the I've always encouraged people to compete to get experience and blah 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 and then when they're strong enough they'll be skillful enough to display their strength in the context of the strongman sport. However, competed at the weekend and what one of the, my clients Deck Wilding shout out to him he came fifth out of the seventeen at the under one hundred five qualifier. He had zero expectations. He has no no idea. He just wanted to go and have a bit of fun and go against like some really good guys or whatever. Like he just just had no kind of expectations of himself. And it's it's quite funny, really, because we 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 was like to train with him. We just think, oh my god, he's so he's so strong. He's so good at everything. He's like. But he, he's never actually realised that how good he could be himself, um, and he's done what he's done one comp before, and his attitude and was, was like two and a half years ago, and he hasn't competed since. And but he's been training strongman training, literally every like he he's, he hasn't missed a week of his program for like I don't know four years or something like training strongman and getting better with the goal of getting better at the strongman list. Like quite amazing, really. Cause I almost uh, like at times I've always thought, I've thought, why, why are you, why are you even doing this? Why are you getting tacky on a, on a Saturday by yourself? Why? And then you're not competing. And um, like I've, I've gone free phase. I'm like, Oh, do you want to do the under nineties? Cause he's always like, cause he's been like about 96 body weight or whatever, 95, 96 or whatever he has been for a while. Uh, so I was like, oh, do you want to cut, cut, do you want to do the 90s? You'd be really good at 90s or whatever. And like, he's one of those guys that has got into the gym, which I've, I've learned in the last couple of years, like really. He's one of those people that got into the gym and he was like, he's come from the skinny, scrawny kind of background where he's going to the gym to build self-esteem and stuff like that. Whereas like someone like me is going into the gym just so I don't get really fat or like combined with from a spot like a sporting element a competitive element like i would if i didn't compete in strongman like I, w- I wouldn't go to the gym to keep in shape you know what i mean like i'm just not interested in it at all like i just love the buzz of competing and whatnot whereas um whereas deck De- deck said to me like like basically like a few years ago i thought right well if we could he's lifting x y and z like we could be it could be pretty competitive really quite quickly in the under 90s and like he he said to me the goal was oh well, I want to I'll, I'll just wait until I'm uh, I'll I'll, I'll want to put on a bit of weight and I'll just wait until I'm strong enough for that and I always thought oh it's gonna it's gonna take him ages to be strong enough to be like competitive or do respectably if you will and I thought and I would like always put myself in the athlete shoes and always thought if that was me i'd i want i'd want some quicker i want to be like i didn't want him to drop off because he's not getting any kind of reward for the stuff he's putting in do you know what i mean yeah but basically basically i'm saying that i completely underestimated him by like like just basically said right it's going to take fucking ages to to get to where you, where you want to be and it's going to if you want to do that it's going to take you're going to have to slowly build muscle build up your lift or whatever to get competitive at that level and um and cre- like absolute credit to him he's done that he hasn't like like i say i don't know what four years or something he started the same day as the twins and like he's been training exactly the same like the same amount of sessions every week as they have. And all the time he's been watching them and supporting them and thinking, oh, they're doing well. They're getting the glory. They're getting sponsorship. They're getting, they're going for these records. They're getting this exposure. And he's just been like, he's got about 40 followers on his Instagram page, posting like really good lifts that nobody knows about um, because no, because there's no, like he's not doing it in a comp or whatever. And he's just been happy just chipping away at that. And I, I just think that's absolutely amazing, personally. You know, that thing of... I think that's the best way to do it, because he's, he's doing it, because this is, this is what I say to my guys a lot, which is, 
the, the, the competitive athlete mindset can be a blessing, but it can be a curse because I know me, when especially when I was fully into competing, I would be slogging myself through training sessions because I had to, because I had a goal and I was like, this is my path. And so, not every day, obviously, I still enjoy it, but every day I would be doing what I was supposed to do because I had to and I was forced myself. And sometimes the enjoyment wasn't there. Whereas if you're just training for yourself and to improve, then you, you, you're not as, it's not as mentally taxing, I don't think, which is why I am the way I am now. For the, the last four years, I've just trained for myself. You know, yeah. I mean? I've not been like, well, I've got this comp. I need five seconds a week. My knees are killing, but I'm going to go in and I'm going to take this and do that. And you know what I mean? It, it, it's a different, um, mentally, I think it's a different vibe. And so I think it's, uh, yeah, it's good that he's like that because there's, you know, he had no expectations and now he's realised, wow, I'm top five in the North. Um, you know, that's great. It, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a reward for his graft over the last, four years which which is awesome and now now maybe he'll start to uh you know look at more comps around the uh 105 mark because he knows he's up to standard yeah it's quite 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 amazing and a great great example of like what what we talk about about people being so consistent and just chipping away and if you want to be you can get to anywhere that you want but obviously the the higher you go it's probably going to take a little bit longer to get there. And we're, we're, I think we're, we're, we're the same milk of, in terms of, you know, like if someone say, if someone says to you, that, like say a new client, for instance, and they give you like a lofty goal, you know, they say, oh, I want to get to Giants Live or whatever. Like, and they're, and the, I don't know, they're, they're pulling a 260 deadlift. Like, a lot of the time, you, do, you it, 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 what I'm saying is like, it's hard to sieve, between like before time before a time has elapsed in a relationship it's hard to sieve between like are people just are they, is he just saying that or has he really got the characteristics of because it's going to take ages and they're going to have to do all these tiny tiny steps for a hell of a long time and not get knocked off like like statistically most people do most people something gets in the way yeah so much shit happens in your personal life and that fucking derails you like most people yeah but these kind of these kind of top elite athletes or people achieving stuff are, like have kind of got good at like not getting derailed by stuff Is you like know, right? video on youtube saying how to get from 200 deadlift to 400 deadlift and i didn't tell anyone a program i literally told them the, a realistic expectation of how long it's going to take and the issues you're going to face in your job because I, because of what I basically said. So I'm going to link it to this, by the way. Yeah, I, I literally said, like, you're going to start this journey and you're probably, like, let's say you're younger, you might live at home and be like, training, training, training. All you do is train and fucking eat and everything's done for you. And then you get a message, you get a better job, you move out. You know what I mean? Life, it's hard to, it's hard yeah. to, you know what I mean? It's I've been doing this um, 13, 14 years, and I am one of the people that has, no matter what situation I've been in, I've prioritised training because I'm a bit obsessive. But yeah. it's well, I've left jobs because I was like, I can't do this job and train properly. Like I've left jobs, I've broke up with fucking so many girls. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's yeah, it's easy to get derailed to be honest. Yeah, and not. People just think about the programming aspect. Oh, no, I'll stick to yeah, me. Plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that, mate. It's like a lifetime ambition that you've got to work towards to get Giants Live. It's not a, it's not a like side hobby. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that, that's what that's why I'm excited about the goals that I set to myself like long term because like I look at it like a lot deeper than the programming and stuff. And I think to me, right, I've gone through quite a lot of phases in the last five years since I've been training properly. Let's say. And I've gone through, like, I've li nearly lost my business a couple of times. I've, like, I've had a baby. I've, uh, I've moved house. I've, like, the, like, these kind of bit, like, I've got engaged. What? What? It's always, the, it's always a challenge, isn't it? Anytime something yeah, big. Yeah, fucking right, fucking right there is. And, um, 
like like stuff like say I remember when obviously a lot of people have dealt with COVID and stuff, but I remember when uh, like COVID came and um, and and they, they announced that you got the you had to shut the on the same day that was it wasn't it like we had um, Mo- Molly had finished maternity leave it was like fourteen months she'd been on maternity leave looking after Elsie I'd never looked after Elsie by myself on at at all. And um, and then it was the following week where her maternity leave had finished. She was back to work, but we had childcare sorted. Our grandparents on a two days a week or whatever. Our, our parents were looking after her, but we found then that the shielding thing came in, so our parents couldn't look after her. Molly had to go back onto the thing on the kind of front line, the NHS on the COVID ward. She'd been moved to. She hadn't been to work for fourteen months. I hadn't looked after the baby on, on her own, on my, on my own. And that same day, they announced that the gym had closed. So my business had fucking closed down, basically. I didn't know whether I was going to earn any money. And I didn't have any time to earn, like, to look at building other side hustles or earn money because I was looking after this baby that I didn't fucking didn't know, didn't know how to look after. Because, <laughs> like, but my point was, like, that I still I still got my four training sessions in that week. Do you know what I mean? And I still because and we, we've talked about it before. Like I'm not I, I'm not saying that everybody should be like that because a lot of people listening to this, it's just a hobby and it's fine. Stuff like stuff that's more important. Stuff so other stuff is more important. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. Whenever I see any lifter do something that's like out of the norm you know that alongside that has become there's come a lot of sacrifice and a lot of yeah a lot of graft like like for example when you go for your under 80 dumbbell world record i know that all the things in the past two years that have been thrown at you that you've not been derailed and that you've got your sessions all that stuff adds up to that one little moment you know what i mean and yeah. that's how, like that's how you get them special moments. So when people are chasing lofty goals like world record this, world record that, get to Giants here, win 105 England, that goal doesn't come without the intent and and graft and drive to 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 just get shit done no matter what you know is thrown at you. Yeah, and to, and to be fair, like on that as well, I like, talked about deck uh, Chris, Chris who won. Um, he he was what he was one of those guys that met, that messaged me at first and he said he had the, had these lofty goals and um, and I just thought oh yeah well let's see, let's see what happens basically and then as ta- six months elapsed and I thought fucking hell actually this guy is serious and I and I wasn't impressed with it's not the lifts that you're impressed with it's the juggling of all the oh, I've had all this shit going on but I've I've I managed to put that to the side and I got but I, I did this instead that day I moved that to that day. And it's shit like that where you think, oh shit, this guy, this is what this is this is what what makes your potential so much higher, in my opinion. Yeah, same like, with uh, Magoo. Them two were like neck and yeah, neck. Yeah, exactly. And you've seen you've seen those two were were just like in a different league, in my opinion. I didn't know. I can't. I, I didn't see the finishing scores, but those two were just fucking unbelievable. Like absolutely brilliant. Dude moved from down south quit his job, opened a gym, you know, he's done all this stuff in the last, this is all in the last couple of uh, months whilst prepping for the comp, so he's been juggling the, you know, you know the struggles when you take the, the jump yourself, um, he's, he's left his job and jumped into the gym and now he's got to get members and, you know, he's there at driving, the, uh, teaching these classes at different times and getting members yeah. in and he's all there, but still making sure that he's um, getting his shit done for the comp and it really I think Chris's performance was mega and so was Scott so I was really happy with him and yeah I was kind of uh, because well, I, I, think, I think they, they seem quite similar really like in in terms of like attitude like like I remember I just done, I just got mauled by a fucking car yoke at Manimals and I got this and I got this phone call during the comp and it was it was Chris he'd done the North qualifier last year I think he finished fourth or something. And he's like, oh yeah, mate, buzzing. I beat so-and-so on yoke. 
uh, he's brilliant, I beat him or whatever. And he's like, oh, mate, I want to uh, I, I want to win. I want to be king of the north. And I said, like, right, well, let's do it. We'll do it next year. Like, the, like, I'll lay out what you need to do and you go and hit the steps. And he's just hit every single step. Like, you look at, like, pe- people look at the, like, say, individual lift or whatever, but just the commitment to being all right, like, stuff like, He's, he's gone and had a nutrition coach. He's got like somebody helping him with psychology and stuff like that. Like any kind of facet that he can improve at, like he wants to take, he wants to take care of. And it's just very impressive because that was a little bit of a weak lift for him. And um, that's what, what was that? That his overhead is his overhead yeah. program has been the thing that I've noticed the most. It was a little it's bit of a I don't know if you remember that that like I put a video up and it was him like getting like struggling with a hundred log. But, yeah, like, no, it was a weak lift and now it's very strong. It's like that was it. I did like I did like a progress video when he got from like hundred to one twenty, and now he's done like I think he did one fifty five every week. Yeah, one fifty five, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. I remember five axle. I was like, wow, you've gone from having a weakness to this being a strength. Now this is like a, you know, this is up there with, you know, you can be winning the overhead events in your class now. So, yeah, it was good. Really good. Uh, but but basically the, the, the whole, whole thing of this episode is like, you, you it's be, be, like, even though we've talked in the previous episodes about programming and improving technique or what can I do to improve this? Like, like actually look at the, the the whole thing chipping away over the course of time and being so relentlessly consistent that's where you're gonna that's where you're gonna make the make the progress. Diddle dum dum